I laughed at his description of the mean between various deficits and ex excesses at um, 1106B, again, if you're following along in the book. But that's basically the part where he compares some wrestler to some average guy with regard to how much they ought to eat. He's talking about how, like, one guy should eat 10 pounds of food, and somebody else should only eat two, but a normal guy shouldn't necessarily eat the mean between the two. In other words, six pounds of food. Um, I kind of just got this image of a big, beefy, physical trainer trying to get some scrawny guy to eat a huge pile of cheeseburgers. Um... But in all seriousness, though, it, it sounds as if he's saying that each moral agent has their own specific standard of behavior and virtue. But then later, he says that there are many ways to do something wrong and only one way to do something right. Which, again, at face value, looks like he's saying the opposite of what I thought. But it also works on a case-by-case -case basis in which, you know... There's a, a thousand different ways for me to do my virtue wrong, and only one way for me to do it right, which is different than just about everybody else's one way of doing it right. There's a thousand ways to do it. My way is one way out of the thousand, and her way will be a different way out of the thousand, and that all works. I think it was somewhere around here where he starts saying that virtues are closer to one extreme for another. Uh, we're going to go back to my picture here, if I can figure out which way to hold it. But um, basically... If you look, I have good over here and bad down here, so, like, foolhardiness is closer to courageousness. Um, and I, I think that this is basically um, because of appearances and his idea about the internal mentalities and passions. Um, basically, compared to a courageous person, a coward will appear vile and craven, whereas a foolhardy man in comparison to a courageous person will simply look a little bit crazy. Um, it'll be easier to confuse a foolhardy person with a courageous person, whereas some idiot hiding in the barrels at the bottom of the ship during a sea battle will just look like a loser. I don't really feel like getting into chapters 7, 8, and 9, uh, because they each address certain specifics within the framework that he laid out up until this point. He kind of gets into details about temperance and, and uh, justice and things like that, and I kind of thought they were boring. Yeah, they sounded like the other eight books, basically. Um, I kind of thought his fake it till you make it was in there somewhere, but after reading it a couple times, I guess it's in chapter 3 somewhere. But basically, his fake it till you make it thing is, you don't start out courageous, you have to focus on copying the courageous person like I was talking about before. Um, and so, in copying the courageous person, you, you begin to actualize a virtue that you don't actually have. You might have the capacity for it, but until you start developing it, it's not really there. Just like the eyesight for a baby. They see things, there's the, the eye images going into the brain, like they don't really recognize anything until they start focusing on faces and, and learning about objects, and then they develop the sense of sight. In the same way, virtue works that way. Um, so I start acting like a courageous person would act in the spirit of trying to become uh, virtuous, and then I actualize that virtue, which in turn strengthens that capacity until at some point I go from being you know, a coward who's trying to be courageous or a foolhardy person who's trying to be courageous to a courageous person who's trying to become better at being courageous. Um, that's essentially everything that I really drew out of book two. I think that there's a lot more in there. I just didn't have time to get into it in tonight's video. I'm sorry that this video is so late in the weekend. Again, I've just been really swamped. And as you'll see on my Facebook page, we, we had a good time with the Memorial Day barbecue. And uh, I hope everybody did something to honor our soldiers because um, they're important. Uh, without soldiers, we wouldn't have a nation. I don't care what anybody says. Um, with that, 
Uh, comments are more than welcome, uh, especially response videos, but barring response videos, comments on Facebook or even better on the comment section down below. Uh, that way we can get a, a good sense or a good establishment on YouTube. Um, I'm hoping to get viewership outside of our little uh, like eight person discussion group. That way um, we can basically spread an enthusiasm for philosophy across the nation and maybe even the world and do something good and that's applied philosophy like we were talking about the first session but in all reality I don't think that's gonna happen it's just a pipe dream that I want to accomplish at some point in my life um, that being said uh, have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing all of our discuss discussion people uh, next weekend Um, let's see here. Or hearing is kind of, uh, I, it would imagine, uh, by using, um, he just, he, uh, let's see here. But there's not really much registration or re um, I don't really feel like getting into books seven, eight, and nine, uh, basically because they each, or not books, uh, chapters. He said, oh, um, let's try that again.